Um, Dr. Osterberg, let me ask you a question. One of the fears... Um, concerns um, and um, uh, patients have when going to a chiropractor is uh, once you go, you're hooked, almost like on drugs. You have to go all the time. And um, uh, and it can become expensive. And, of course, um, it cuts into your daily activity. Uh, You know, drive there, wait there, drive back. uh, It's um, just not uh, simple. Um, can you shade some light on there? Is is this really because I, I've talked to many chiropractors and many say um, that's just not needed, and many say yeah, that's just how it is. It's almost like flossing teeth. What's your philosophy on that? You know, every doctor has a little different approach, a little different philosophy. There may be some chiropractors out there with a goal of trying to get every patient to keep coming back all the time and forever. Um, but with our approach of evidence-based care. Our goal is really to get people feeling good and functioning normally without pain and then get them on a home exercise program for prevention. So our goal is really to see people as few visits as possible and not have to keep seeing them into the future. And I think that's something that makes our practices a little bit different in our profession. Mm. So so you rather have... Uh, a, a, a couple thousand patients coming uh, a, a few times than having a few people coming a couple thousand times. Absolutely. That's, and that's what patients want too. You know, when you go to the doctor, if your doctor can get you the results that you want with five visits, wouldn't you prefer that over coming 50 times? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. that's how I want to be treated. That's, that's the, just the golden rule, treat people the way that you want to be treated. And that's how we take care of our patients at the Osterberg Chiropractic Center. Absolutely. But give me an example or two uh, of how you can achieve that. How 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 can you be so precise that uh, a pain, because that's really what it is all about, uh, pain, yes. or, or which is usually associated with pain, or um, uh, not being able to do certain things. Like it's not it's not good to drive in the car and not be able to turn your head. Uh, it, it's just it's just it's uncomfortable. It is usually slightly painful, uh, and it's definitely dangerous. You know, I mean, yeah. Um, so, it, it, tell me how you know how how do you achieve that on a regular basis? A few weeks. Well, we we certainly can't get those results with everybody. But a couple of years ago, we did some research with 200 sequential patients in our office, and we had an 81 percent satisfaction rate. Now, that's looking at patients with new problems, acute conditions. It's also looking at people with who came to us with chronic problems. And we did this research or did this survey 12 months after they'd been discharged from their care, and 81 percent of them said that they got good to excellent results one year after we were done with them. So we're very happy with the kind of results that we're getting. And I think that the key to that is that we pay a lot of attention to function. You know, we don't just look at how do you feel today, Mrs. Jones? How do you feel today, Mrs. Jones? How do you feel today, Mrs. Jones, visit after visit? But it's how well are you able to function? And we use some, we use some tests and some outcome measures to keep track of that. And as a patient's function improves, then we can become more aggressive with exercise to get them doing more. The more they can do, the more we have them do. And then the more they can do, the more we have them do until their function is back to normal and they don't need us anymore. So you basically test them by performing a particular function, such as go try to look over your shoulder or whatever it might be. Yes. And um, next thing you know is you go, oops, you know, she might not complain about it as such at this, at this moment. So selling how do you feel, you go, well, I feel good, but she forgot all that she can't look like that or that she can't bend or whatever it may be. So you make doing those things. And, uh, or, or, you know, measure it somehow and then you go, wait a minute, because he or she cannot do or because he or she can do, this is okay, this part of the body is okay or is not okay and needs some uh, treatment. And by doing so, you zoom in to do the problem faster, I guess. I don't know. Yes, absolutely. Patients always come to us because of pain and because there's one thing they can't do. I can't play golf. I can't back my car out of the garage. I can't pick up my grandchildren. You know, they always have one very simple goal, and I want to get rid of pain. But when we address a patient, we look at their pain. We also look at their flexibility. We look at their muscle endurance. We look at their strength. We look at their posture. We look at their global fitness level, their global conditioning level. And we, we need to see improvements in all of those areas as their pain level is improving. And that's how we get lasting results. Because all those areas work together, I suppose, right? Yes, absolutely. 
Absolutely. If you can make a little bit of a change in each of those five areas, the patient will feel a, a huge difference in their lifestyle. So getting a little bit of improvement in each area is a lot better than trying to fix one area perfect. Well, what, what happens is some doctors focus on one area, let's say flexibility, and they just keep working on you know, more stretching, more stretching, more flexibility, more flexibility, and they're ignoring everything else. And, and you reach a point where you can't improve flexibility without increasing the patient's balance and the, and the patient's strength and maybe the patient's posture. So because of the synergistic effect that exercise and rehab has when it's applied appropriately, you can really get some tremendous outcomes, even with patients who've had problems for years. Wonderful. That's nice to hear. So basically a synergistic approach uh, and a measured approach, basically, measured, you know. Yeah. So, so one sees the improvement. Well, I guess it's like with, you know, a person in a hospital, you have the fever chart at the, you know, below at the bed at the feet, and uh, if a certain medicine works, it the fever is improving. If it doesn't work, it isn't improving, and you know you need to change the medicine uh, because it isn't uh, biting. So you do a similar type of uh, approach. Measure whether Absolutely. the treatment gets improvement, and if it does, you can continue on it. If it doesn't, then obviously another part should be uh, uh, fixed. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's nice and it's motivating for patients because we can show them you started out with only 17% strength and after two weeks you're up to 42% strength and maybe a month later they're up to 96% strength and they don't need us anymore. So they can see each of their individual deficits that help make up their problem. Great. Wonderful. It's good information, Dr. Osterberg. Thanks a lot. Thank you.